Is it a phone? Is it an e-reader? Or is it a lifestyle? The Onyx Books Palma fits into many categories, and maybe it's a device for you. The Onyx Books Palma is an Android e-reader with a phone form factor. Say that five times fast. Even though it looks like a phone, and even has a slot that looks like an, a SIM card tray, it's not a phone. And this is not a SIM card tray. It does have a micro SD memory card slot, which enables you to add an additional 128 gigabytes to the already whopping 120 gigabytes of internal memory. Making this device a beast for eBooks, music, and more dynamic content such as video, but we'll talk more about that later. Even though this device is not a phone, it in fact has the Google Play Store, so you can download any application available. This is what I would consider an excellent companion device. What does that mean? Well, for myself, for example, I've been on the dumb phone journey, and I'd like to carry a device with me that can do the two-factor authentication and have basic communication applications to contact my family living in the States while I'm living in France. With certain dumb phones, you have the opportunity to have a hotspot, and I do this with my device, the Onyx Books Palma, to connect and do those authentications or check messages that I'm waiting on. This enables me to more or less keep disconnected but connected and also have a handheld e-reading device. Now, before jumping in the technical specifications and software, I'd like to take a look at the hardware of this amazing device. The Books Palma comes in black or white housing and is composed of a hard but textured plastic, which makes it easy to hold. If you're used to holding a larger cell phone, then you'll appreciate the ease of usage in the hands, unlike bigger e-ink tablets or the Kindle, which can be a challenge to hold one-handed. The device is water repellent, but not water resistant. So it will repel small splashes or raindrops and maybe an accidental coffee spill, but might not survive a dunk in the toilet or bath. One of the biggest difference I noticed with the Books Palma compared to an iPhone Pro Max, for example, is the weight. This thing is light as a feather. But don't let the lack of weight fool you into thinking this device is cheap or junky. It makes it a lot easier to read ebooks and articles without giving you wrist or hand strain. Another great design feature are the buttons. These buttons serve as the classic up and down volume rockers, power button and lock button, as well as the refresh button for the e-ink display. What's nice is that these buttons can be customized to scroll up and down pages when reading or scrolling web pages. The buttons can be customized for each app that you're using and your usage needs. You'll also notice the mic at the top of the device as well as the speakers at the bottom. When playing content, the device can get quite loud and speakers are impressive. It's also more than sufficient if you're making calls for example, via WhatsApp or Messenger, and you want to be able to hear your conversation without using headphones. Unfortunately, like most modern devices, this device does not have a headphone jack and you'll need to use a Bluetooth device or headphones that connect via USB-C. On the back of the device, you have a 16 megapixel camera with flash that does the job, but since the device is not in color e-ink, you'll only see the picture in black and white. The photos are in color, so if you send it to another device or someone else, the pictures will appear in color on their device. It's not designed to be a content creation device, but it's more than enough to share a quick snap. This device has the possibility for you to modify the refresh rate app by app. For example, if you're using the web browser and you notice that certain websites are more dynamic than others, for example, they might have videos playing or animations when you're scrolling, you can change the refresh rate to be a high refresh rate for that specific application. To get a better refresh rate, I would recommend swiping up from the bottom of the device to access the refresh menu. From here, you can choose your app specific refresh 
or if you want to get a complete list of your applications and go through and manually select the refresh rate for each of those apps, select the settings icon. Now, if you're using reading applications such as Kindle or the default reading application, you can change it to a slower refresh rate. This will enable you to save battery life, of course, but also be able to manually refresh by using the refresh button on the side if needed. There's not much ghosting if you're using the reading applications, but if you're using video playback such as YouTube, you'll notice a lot of ghosting and lagging. This is because the e-ink technology is not quite where it should be for video playback, but it suffices enough, especially if you just want to listen to certain YouTube videos. Besides the refresh rate, you can also modify the brightness and temperature of your device to adapt to your reading preferences and lighting conditions which is great if you plan on using the device outside. Now, the main usage or target audience for this device are those of us who like to read. Is this a good e-reader? And how does it compare to other reading devices such as the Kindle? Now, if you're comparing this device to a Kindle, you'll notice that the speed is very different. The book's Palma comes with six gigs of RAM. This makes the device considerably faster if you're going in between applications. The Kindle, on the other hand, is notoriously slow. So if you're looking to download eBooks, it's going to be a lot faster with the Books Palma. One of the biggest advantages, of course, is having access to the Google Play Store. From there, you can download any reading application that you wish. A lot of us have preferences for specific applications, especially if you're looking for accessibility. If you have an app that you use on an Android device, it should work on the Books Palma since you have access to all the applications. Now keep in mind the Books Palma is not in color display. So if you're looking to read a book that has images that are in color, it will only appear in black and white. By default, the Books Palma comes with its own reader. I found this reader quite useful. I used it for downloading and reading PDFs, and you can even have it read text-to-speech in the background while you're using other applications. Another big question about this device is battery life. Is it good? Is it better than the Kindle? Well, that depends. Overall, the battery is not better than the Kindle, but that's because you can't do much on the Kindle besides read. For myself, when I'm using the books Palma, if I'm using it with heavy usage, which means I'm consuming content such as video and using Bluetooth while also using messaging applications, the battery can last me from anywhere from three days to a week. But if I'm using it for casual usage for reading and only browsing PDFs, documents, or the occasional Reddit forum, this device can last me a few weeks. So overall, the battery life is quite good compared to a modern flagship device. But again, it's an e-ink device, so it should be using less power in general. But be aware when you're using Bluetooth, video, and multiple refreshes, for example, the high refresh rate all the time, this could drain your battery a lot faster. The one major downside I found about the device is the price point. I paid 279 euros in mid-December 2023 for this device. I do find the price point a bit high considering this is not a phone, but I would still recommend the device for those of you looking to reduce your eye strain or if you have a visual impairment and you like to read on e-ink over an LCD or an OLED screen. I myself bought this device to help reduce my eye strain and it does. It's like reading on a Kindle, but I don't always want to read a book and sometimes I would rather browse a forum and I find that I have a lot less eye strain using this device. In conclusion, this device fits in many categories. Is it a device that you need in your life? Maybe. Is it a device you can't live without? Probably not. And is it a device that is considered a little bit of a luxury? Yes, of course. The price point is, again, a bit high for a device that's not a phone. But would I recommend this device? Absolutely. It's great. It's super. It's 
limiting me from accessing my smartphone all the time and reducing my addiction. Whether or not it's what you're looking for is up to you.